Brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey and Adafruit. Here we go, Lady Ada. What is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, this week it's from Infineon. All this chip is actually originally from Cypress, but Cypress and Infineon. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Isn't this from... Yes, you see Because there's the great mergers. I know. So many. So they merged in like 2019, 2020. Right. Um, so this is a kind of a two-piecer. Um, it's for the uh, Cypress PSOC... Um, 4000 T series, uh, but also the eval board that they have, um, which let me get the exact part number. It is the uh, CY8C Proto 040T, which is a, a really cool um, cap touch or cap sense capacitive touch slider and uh, button dev board. And I'll show a demo at the end. Um, but this is basically about uh, the series of chips. So these are ARM Cortex M0 chips, they're low cost, they're very small. Um, they're M0 pluses running at 48 megahertz with 64K flash, 8K RAM. So they're not like, you know, huge powerhouse chips, but they will run most small, you know, goods on their own. They can act as a main processor. Um, they don't have a ton of peripherals. Like there's no ADC, there's no USB. Um, they have two, you know, serial com blocks that can be I2C, CSPR, UART. Um, but what they do have is very, very low power and tons of capacitive touch inputs, uh, 16 inputs out of the 21 GPIO. So pretty much like every pin can be part of either a uh, self-capacitance or mutual capacitance um, network. And uh, another kind of cool thing is they have a built-in I2C bootloader, which I found out later. Okay, so um, capacitive sense is really useful when you have um, a device that's really small, so it can't mechanically have space for buttons, or you don't want the problems that happen when you have buttons or switches where they get dirty and they go bad and they have a life and a little bit of water gets in and then um, your entire product is basically ru ruined because like, you know, the on off button doesn't work anymore or it's really flaky. Um, that sucks. Whereas capacitive touch sensing can go behind a fully sealed plastic or glass enclosure. Um, and so it's it's great for, you know, especially if you can use it for your on off switch, um, you know, when you touch it, uh, the device automatically turns on. That's kind of handy. So this uh, series of chips includes their fifth generation of the CapSense um, protocol. So, you know, caps, capacitive sensing itself is it's pretty simple. You charge an RC filter using the capacitance as the C and you have some fixed R. But there's a lot of filtering and software that happens on top of that that actually makes it reliable. Um, and that's the thing is a lot of times when you have a very inexpensive uh, capacitive touch implementation, it's not reliable and it's flaky and people get frustrated using it um, because it turns on or off, you know, when it gets wet or when you brush by it, you should it should feel as reliable as a tactile switch without the um, inconsistency of life, you know, a lifelong value of a, of a mechanical switch. Um, so there's, uh, you know, the standard capacitive touchpad, this is like self-capacitance, is you have a trace going to the pin, um, you have a, a ground shield around it that, you know, helps avoid um, issues with, uh, you know, cross-contamination of signal or, or water. You have an overlay to protect it, and then, you know, sometimes you have an LED underneath or around to indicate when it's been pressed, um, and that pin... Um, is connected internally into the capacitive touch peripheral that can detect when it's touched. Ideally, it kind of does all the work for you. So when somebody touches it, it just tells you like, hey, it's been pressed. You don't have to do any of that filtering and software. By connecting multiple pads together, you can make a slider. Um, these interdigitated pads, you know, you, you have like eight, six to eight different pads, and then you can uh, take a moving average across all the pads and you can tell where the finger is and you can, you know, basically have a slider um, that you can use or, you know, on the, the second or third generation of the iPod, it was used as a capacitive touch wheel that could be used to, um, you know, fast forward or uh, raise the volume or lower the volume. Um, there's also mutual capacitance, which has multiple lines, and this is often used for grids. Um, you know, you have an XY grid and you have uh, multiple pads. Uh, this allows you to have, you know, more pads with fewer connections. Um, also, sometimes it improves the reliability. Um, no, so there's there's pros and cons. I, I link to a white paper in the text that you can read the pros and cons of using uh, self 
sigma delta capacitance versus uh, mutual capacity uh, versus mutual capacitance. Um, but the thing that is challenging, especially if you've used like older products, capacitive touch, is that when liquid gets on them, um, the water the water droplet has capacitance in it, and it's uh, capacitive enough that it will trigger the sensor. And so, you know, I've seen this if you go outside when you like try to use your phone when it's wet, water gets on the screen, like suddenly it like thinks that you've touched all these buttons and stuff. Um, especially if you have products that are used in wet environments like a bathroom or outside or in a gym where there's a lot of sweat and people like, you know, spilling water and, and damp towels or in a kitchen, um, you're going to have liquids that splash on it. You don't want to have your oven accidentally turn on because somebody, you know, accidentally splashed some water on the control surface. So it's definitely important if you're making white goods or home goods that are being used like pretty much anywhere in the home or outside or uh, in a gym to not accidentally turn on when some water drops on it. Um, so what's nice about the fifth generation is it's got, not only is it does it handle drift, but it handles like instantaneous water droplets a lot better. Um, so on the top is, and important to look at the Y scale because it doesn't start at zero, it starts at like 39,000 count and it goes up to 40. So, the, you know, the count difference is only a couple thousand counts. On the top row is, you know, previous versions of Capacitive Sense implementations. At the bottom is the CapSense uh, 5 uh, generation. They've gotten much, much better at, you know, detecting mist or water droplets. So, like, if you're thinking of, um, you know, you have a pair of headphones and you want to detect when they're inserted, also when somebody's tapped them to uh, mute or fast forward or up or, you know, raise or lower the volume. Um, common use case for, um, you know, fully sealed devices that want capacitive touch interfaces. Um, the PC, uh, PSOC 4000 series does a much, much better job. Doesn't have the false readings, but also doesn't lose your range of sensing. So you get the full range. So you can really detect, like you have a very consistent response to capacitive touches. Um, another nice thing about this chip, which I thought was cool, is you know, if you're using a Cortex-M0, one of the things you're going to like is the very low power uh, deep sleep mode. So this has an autonomous capacitive touch system where it can do wake to touch at six microamperes because the capacitive touch sensing system will happen like autonomously. It's called like the autonomous system. Happen on its own and then we'll wake up the chip. So you don't have to wake up the whole chip just to do a reading or to do an averaging or to run the software. You'll at least get like the basic readings um, from that cap sense block. And so you can have like much, much deeper sleep. You know, six microamperes is what they say. Um, and uh, that way you don't have to have a separate on off switch. You can actually just have your device automatically turn on. And then when somebody picks up or touches it, it turns um, it turns back on. So, yeah, this is the um, the chain. You know, it used to be 50 microamperes. Now it's as low as six microamperes. If you want more complicated interfaces like with um, high refresh rate, you know, you'll go up to like 100 microamperes or so. And it's in stock at HD. Yes, the eval board is in stock. So I want to show the demo. Maybe we'll go to the overhead real yeah. fast. Okay, so this is the... Make sure it's focused. Okay, so this is the eval board that you get. So you get the debug interface, and then this is the actual chip. And then, um, let's see if I can do this. So this is the capacitive touch button. So you see, I press it. I touch it and and it goes off and it's pretty good if I you know have to really touch right on top of it and then this is the slider so as you see as I go up and down it um, increases the brightness and lowers it and then what I did is I just uh, had this water bottle and I just I just I just oh my god there's like water all over the place and I got it nice and wet and then what you'll notice is uh oh got the chip wet, which I should have done. Too much water. Okay, so even though this is wet and it has like all these droplets, it still yeah. works just fine. And then this one also is nice and damp. Still works great. Don't get water on the Dangerous. chip. But um, on the surface, because it's covered with a... a Dangerous thing. for a live demo. I know. Well, I have a second one if I had it. Next yeah. to. But you can see I'm even like smearing the water on it, and it's doing a really good job of, of not letting the water change the readings. 
So a nice, this is a really good uh, solid capacitive touch uh, software fil filter system. Okay. Okay. And with that is INMPI. Yep. Hi, INMPI.